Welcome to Boots in Baltimore. I'm Leanne Blanchard. I'm sitting here with Erin Walker, who is the Partnerships and Recruitment Manager for Thread. Now, when I first heard of Thread, I thought it was maybe a new clothing store, but what is it really? Not the first time we're <laughs> first time we've heard that before, but Thread uh, essentially, or I like to start out metaphorically, is we're weaving together a new social fabric of diverse individuals that are basically coming from different cross sections of Baltimore. And um, by pu putting all those people together, we're literally building a stronger community, stronger neighborhoods, and a stronger Baltimore. It's a little bit more obvious from the logo, but it's true. It's not close. So what are some of the ways Thread is different than other mentoring programs? There's a lot in Baltimore, but this is unique. Right, so one thing we like to establish is that we're not exactly a mentoring program. We do have mentoring occurring, but uh, mentoring often implies sort of a power structure. There's a mm -hmm. hierarchy, and we like to consider that everyone's kind of on the same playing field. And uh, through that, we one thing we do that's very unique actually is that we enroll young people that are ninth graders in high school and we enter them into a 10-year commitment. That 10-year yes. commitment is something Thread does, not something we expect our volunteers to do, but we never unenroll a young person no matter what happens. So they are in it for good and that's something that's very unique about what we do because other programs might have thresholds where something right, they such age and out. Such happens. Mm -hmm. and, but they're always a part of our family. Even after 10 years, we often see that they're still very much present. Sometimes they end up working for for Thread, they end up as employees and ambassadors and sometimes even on the board of directors. Oh, wow. Wow. So how does Thread enroll students into their program? Who could join? Um, it is very uh, strictly for ninth graders that are entering um, high school and specifically ninth graders that are on track to not graduate. They are in the bottom 25% of their classes academically and performance wise. Um, so we enter them specifically into the program because we we want to take the easy route out. We can work with students that are doing right. well, but that doesn't change the equitable landscape in the way that we're really trying to. Interesting. So, so you're only taking incoming freshmen. If somebody's older, they couldn't join later? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Until they get older, older, and then they could volunteer. Yeah, and we work <laughs> with the schools. We partner with them, um, and we identify who these students are and then from there, we obviously need approval from a parent or guardian right. as well. And we, they need to be invested too. If they say, no, this is not for me, we can't force them in no, the door. That's not gonna work. No. <laughs> so how, how about volunteers? How could somebody decide to become involved? Uh, well, first thing we're looking for is anyone, um, <laughs> you know, anyone who's willing to share and give their time mm -hmm. to building a relationship with a young person and someone who's passionate about that. Mm -hmm. Um, from there, it's a matter of where we find these people and how the company sort of began was pulling university students because we know they're passionate for opportunity, they're hungry for worldliness. And Meaning. They, they haven't been too exposed to the world yet to yeah. have that, uh, I don't want to say tainted perspective. <laughs> but Cynical. Yeah, a little, a little cynical, but the, you know, they're hungry to, to join something that's maybe bigger than themselves and to maybe make an impact somewhere. Mm -hmm. and. You know, of course, we want that diversity of the cross-section of Baltimore, so we also work with corporations. Um, we find partners all across areas. Sometimes it's small business owners, retirees, but anyone you can think of is welcome to join Thread. Well, part of, part of what was appealing to me after I did a little research and looked into it and signed up, spoiler alert, <laughs> is that it isn't, it isn't just a one-on-one -on -one relationship. It really is... Like you were saying, it's part of a family. It's a group of people that are doing it together. I think that's really appealing. Um, so what do the volunteers do with the kids or with each other? Um, uh, we eat a lot of food. Yeah. <laughs> like we are constantly eating. Um, when we dine together, we learn about each other. It's, it creates a comfortable atmosphere where everyone, like you can't build a relationship if you're hungry, you know, mm -hmm. especially, I mean, anyone. Yeah. You know, hangry people aren't really going out there <laughs> trying to change the world until after breakfast, lunch, or dinner, at least for me, speaking for myself. Well, so what are the expectations for how frequently people get together or... Right, okay, so the frequency is really a matter of, you know, like we want people to come in for a year. And while Thread commits 10 years to our young people, we don't expect volunteers to do that. That'd be kind of crazy. Although we have had volunteers stick around for more than 10 years. 
um, that one year is where we build trust. That's where the relationship starts to like blue mm -hmm. together. We know that it takes time for that too. So ideally we're bringing in volunteers that can commit to that minimum year, uh, maybe a touch point a week, or at least some kind of, I'm reaching out to you, text message, phone call, social media message. Like if you're not getting a hold of them, keep reaching out because consistency is seen by these young people. Mm -hmm. It's something that really resonates with them. Um, and then of course we want our volunteers to understand that we meet them where they are. We're not just going to force them into something they're not interested in. We want to understand what's your life look like. You know, what's your schedule? What is your job? Where do you work? Where do you live? And let's make it as convenient as possible for you so that our site, our site based um, locations are, um, again, convenient, but allow them to maximize their impact with us. All the things you do with basically your family um, mm -hmm. is what you do as a volunteer. We have up to four volunteers for our young people getting through high school. And we want to make sure our volunteers know that they have their own support system as well, um, because that's what makes us, again, very unique, is that we're not expecting a one-on-one -on -one relationship here. It's bi-directional with a whole volunteer squad of people yeah. that have a coach that yeah. have their own support system. I To me, that's so much more appealing, because I have mentored young people in the past. And when I feel that it's you know, that young person's success is entirely dependent on me or um, I'm the only one engaged in it. It it feels lonely a little bit, especially if if we're coming from different places. You know, if I don't have a lot in common with those people, it's easier to to do it as a group where I'm learning everyone and everyone is learning me, and it's a group and we all share that responsibility. I think that's so much better. A word you mentioned, lonely, is actually a pretty major component of why our work is so important. We know that social isolation is a major issue, especially post-pandemic. Um, they say it's worse than smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Yes, they the say. health consequences yeah. are crazy. So, I mean, really we're trying, we're committed to ending social isolation mm -hmm. as an organization and building a more equitable culture in which everyone mm -hmm. thrives. Yeah, I, I'm on board, <laughs> I signed up. So, uh, what are your plans for expansion? We were actually just talking about this on the way up. So Thread right now is in how many schools and how many locations and, and what's the plan going forward? Sure. So let's start with what we originally had. It was two volunteers and one high school with 15 young people. Um, we've expanded in 20 years to six high schools, um, 880 alumni and young people combined. And that is about 3,000 plus volunteers and collaborators. And we're actually inviting a new partnership with uh, Carver Vocational High School that's wow. in the Coppin Heights neighborhood, just south of Mondalmin Mall. So that means new cohort, new young people coming through this year. And then we have this ambitious goal of eventually weaving together 20,000 Baltimoreans, wow. um, adults that mm -hmm. are working with 7% uh, of the freshman or ninth grade population in Baltimore City. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So how did you personally get involved? Uh, my journey began... You know, I mean, I'm born and raised in Baltimore, I should start with, and I was working in the cannabis industry um, when it was medical, and I spent four and a half, five years as the community outreach manager. So um, keeping in mind that structural racism is a thing that has existed for some time and impacts our cities in a big way, especially people of color. I was working in an industry that was setting up retail shops, um, selling legal marijuana or cannabis, if you will. And there's people incarcerated, especially people of color, for petty charges, possession um, that shouldn't be in jail, never deserve to be in jail. And I made it my mission to at least where all of our dispensaries were located and across different states to work with our local nonprofits, local businesses, and to host expungement clinics so that we could try to rectify some of the wrong that happened through the war on drugs. And, and quite similarly, actually, if you want to find the parallel here, um, structural racism and redlining and being a realtor is something you've probably heard, obviously, research. We get a lot of it. training on how not <laughs> yes. to perpetuate all of the discrimination that so happened historically. A lot of that ended up further segregating Baltimore even after you know segregation was technically or politically eliminated. I mean, we saw greater segregation after the fact. So with Thread, you know, we know that working with these different high schools and building communities specific, you know, the impact that we're making is much greater. It's not like I'm working for a corporation trying to make an impact in multiple neighborhoods across three states. I'm working in the neighborhood I live in. I live in Hamden. I live right next to the high school, Ace High School. 
uh, the Academy for College for, and Career Exploration. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. Uh, and that high school, uh, it's a beautiful high school for one, but also it's connected to our community in Hamden. Mm -hmm. And I think it's amazing that I get to directly impact not only where I live, but the city I was born in. And that feels good. I agree. So you kind of um, already addressed this, you know, why, why Baltimore, but not just you getting involved, but this is a homegrown endeavor. This is a Baltimore enterprise. So how did it get started in Baltimore? Our founders, Sarah and Ryan, who are a couple, married, uh, they grew up in Indiana and Ryan in high school was actually facing similar adversity to some of our young people, opportunity and achievement gaps, uh, struggles at home, life happening, if you will. And um, he was on track to not graduate high school. He was failing. The teachers were like, he's wearing the same clothes, like he's not coming to class, like what's going on with Ryan? And they came together, brought together their resources and they rallied for this young student who they believed had everything in his capacity to succeed, but was clearly involved in something yeah, out just of Just didn't have all the resources. Exactly. So that was kind of the inspiration behind uh, how it started. And when Sarah followed Ryan in the Naval Academy to Baltimore and ended up at Johns Hopkins University in grad school, um, she experienced that social isolation of being uh, alone in the big city she doesn't mm -hmm. know anybody in. And from there, she um, kind of drove by, I guess, one of the high schools one day, which was Dunbar, and she thought to herself, I wonder if there's people like Ryan in that high school that could use help, that need more resources, need that support system. And that's how Fred essentially started with this first co cohort of 15 young people at Dunbar. So from Baltimore to the world. Yeah, pretty much. Awesome. So how can people find out more, and particularly how to volunteer? Because this is amazing, and then you could be in my cohort, and it would be awesome. It would be wonderful. <laughs> so people can find out more by obviously visiting the website thread.org. Very simple. Um, there's a wealth of information on there, but more importantly, there's an application on there, too, to apply to be a volunteer. And our volunteers, um, there's a simple process. It's kind of like you get ID'd you fill out an application and then we invite you to, to dinner. You know, I talked about we like to eat and uh, the dinner is just an invitation to introduce you to what Thread's all about. What's it like to be a volunteer? What type of volunteer can you be based on your life, based on your schedule, mm -hmm. based on your curriculum, maybe if you're in school. And then from there, we meet you where you are and we try to determine which volunteer family to place you in and where you fit. Because again, we're not trying to make this complicated. We're trying to remove barriers, not only for young people, but for our volunteers as well. It's amazing. All right, well, I am super stoked. Everyone should at least know about Thread and spread the word because it is so powerful, so impactful in the community. So thank you for doing this. My I really pleasure. appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This, is, this has been Boots in Baltimore. Stay tuned for another episode soon.